hear me now without? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I think you should be able to hear me now without any echoes. And uh, I have muted all speakers. So we can just look through and I, I promise I'll just take five minutes more because I realized that the time was set for one hour and I have to exceed it with one hour. <laughs> okay, so um, what we can do is I think you are able to see my screen now. And um, okay, so this is what I wanted to sort of end the session, today's session with, for us to be able to think about what does it mean to read and write and speak what we write. Uh, it's like I thought it would be absolute silence. Just me. Can you share screen? Okay. Okay. One second. Now, can you view it? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Okay. No, ma'am. Yeah, once again, I'll just do that. Okay, yes, I got your nose. I think now you're able to do it, right? Yes. yes. Now I can see it on my, my mobile as well. Yeah, so uh, this is the point that you would talk about. Yes, it's like I thought it would be absolute silence, just me and my poem. But as I stand on stage preparing to start, I realize the audience is quiet because they want to hear me. Silence isn't scary. It's like Mr. Carey said, silence is my chance. And so I speak slowly and clearly, and I don't see the faces in front of me. I see the images of my poem, and I think, only of what I am saying and how much it means to me. My voice grows stronger and I don't have to struggle to remember the words. I know them because I wrote them. Now, quickly, it's a, it's a poem that we do in meetings. What is it that <clears throat> the poem is about? I gave you one hint already. I'm using it in a particular way. What's the poem about? It's... It is about a poet's uh, experience, how uh, he or she feels while reading his poem in a, um, say, competition or whatever. In on a stage to speak right. about, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. But yes, it is definitely that. Uh, but what is the last two stanzas? If you can just look at the last two stanzas, what do they mean? I see the image. I don't see the faces. It's actually the last three, this side. I don't see the faces in front of me. I see the images of my poem. And I think only of what I'm saying and how much it means to me. It's very interesting, a lot of what you are uh, talking about. Mm. Ma'am, I feel that um, mm -hmm. as, as and when the poet has gone on stage, he eventually has realized that um, all the people around him whom he's going to speak to actually are not people, but they are the audience that whom, who is listening to him. So it's kind of um, like he's growing in his own self-confidence uh, eventually as he's going through the poem. Yeah. Possibly about a young student was something someone has said also. Uh, why do you think, and th these are questions of reading, all right? What I'm doing right now is a reading exercise. It's very interesting. A lot of you are saying about he, he, he. There is a picture out here. 
and the title of it is written on the left is called Sophie. The picture is of a child. Why do yes. you think we all still said he? Yeah. No, it's it's about these matters of reading skills is you got the gist of the message. Absolutely. You got the of even the nuances to some extent of, you know, how they can go through. But to put it together in a kind of composite to try and see if we can do a composite of, you know, what is an image on the left? Because I read and this was a conscious way of trying to get you to do this because I read only the poem. And because we also had that break, I, when I said that this is by Stephen Herrick, we had a break. And so you sort of forgot about the left side of the screen and focused on the right. And um, you started focusing on the meaning of that part. These are reading skills. This entire exercise is a kind of reading skill. This is also the reading skill to become conscious of so that when you're writing, it will be more evident. You know how this would have been more evident? Can you tell me how I could have made you realize Sophie a bit better? This is a very badly, way, badly structured way of pushing it. How could it have been better for you to realize Sophie? Um, Ma'am, so one time the title should have been on top of the poem. Absolutely. Like the heading, like in this manner, right? If it had the types of poem, if it had Sophie yeah. here and then the poem, then it would have been nice. Absolutely. You're right. And so these are kinds of structures when you're reading, if you're conscious about that, you will also implement in writing. So when you're reading, this is an active engagement to say, so you've positioned it there. Is that, you know, is there a purpose to positioning it there? Why do you think you have done it? So these are also kinds of questions to ask. And this takes us back to that, you know, the second module of active reading. The, that's one of the second objective of the course is active reading skills. And so even questioning placement, et cetera, will have to come in. And uh, uh, the image, if it had been in the middle or if it had been a background would have been, you know, you would have thought of this as a child reading. I think a lot of you, uh, some of you at least, seem to have imagined it as a slightly older person reading out a poem in front of an audience. Um, and, and so you, you might want to think about it from those angles, right? So this all, these are the kinds of reading strategies that we will be looking at. Um, it is also important to keep this in mind, and this is my go-to poem for some of the things. When you, one of you started off by saying, what is reading and writing? And you said, express oneself, and that's true. My voice grows stronger, and I don't have to struggle to remember the words. I know them because I wrote them. Taking ownership of your messaging is important, right? So. That is the point. It's, it's not just that the audience, yes, and it is because the audience is quiet because they want to hear me, not because they want to criticize me. So it's a lot of kinds of ways that you can utilize it in terms of reading and building skills. But I also wanted to point out how certain aspects of formatting also influence the way that our reading is uh, shaped and our understanding is shaped. And so those are elements that we may want to also carefully consider. Next class that we will have, and I'll ch ch chalk it out with Yukti, but I think tomorrow, we will try and study uh, a little bit more in detail of narrative voice, of choices, and connect them to how we write and what voices. So some of these reflections of what are the kinds of texts tomorrow I'll try and do, what are the kinds of texts or tomorrow or whenever the next class I'll try and do what are the kinds of texts and especially we'll start with narratology but move on to argumentative and analytical texts and descriptive texts uh, over the course of time. So we'll start with those activities. In the meantime, if you have any doubts, any doubts at all, please do share any feedback also, please do share and uh, Okay, I should have escaped from this also. Yeah. 
And uh, I think you are allowed to discuss in the classwork. So please continue talking through with, you know, uh, you can post something and I will try and respond to it. Okay. I promise to do that. So if you have any doubts, any ideas, you can do that. And thank you all for staying back beyond the class time. Uh, 11, 8, I can see. So thank you very much. I did not introduce myself other than Anusha. Uh, because I assumed you know who I am through your face post. But if you have any doubts about that also, you can ask and I can do that. Okay. Thank you all. Thanks a lot. Um, you can let's go over to you. Yeah. Uh, before ma'am we say bye for like after lecture mm -hmm. I would like to introduce you because the moment I wanted to and the lecture actually began so let me just intro <laughs> introduce you yeah. no problem and I didn't wanted you to uh, I don't and didn't want it uh, to interrupt you at all.